Wasabi wallet. Unfairly private. When you are first getting into Bitcoin, there are a few things you're going to need to learn. Number one is where to buy and sell. Number two is how to use a Bitcoin wallet. And eventually, when you've accumulated enough Bitcoin, you're going to need to learn about proper security. Now, many people utilize what is known as a hardware wallet to securely store the keys to your money offline. There are many different types of devices out there, and one of the most commonly used ones that's been around for the longest is the Trezor. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Trezor Model T, how to initialize it, set it up, and how to use it. I am Ben with the BTC Sessions, and this is your daily session. HODL THE BITCOIN The company that creates Trezor, Satoshi Labs, has been in the space for seven years and they were the first company to create a Bitcoin hardware wallet. Now, the original Trezor One uh, was kind of the mainstay that a lot of people used in the early days, uh, but now the Trezor Model T kind of adds an upgrade to that in that it has a full color touch screen um, and it's just a lot easier to interact with instead of single buttons. Again, they've got the touch screen, so things like pin numbers and putting in backup phrases and things like that are a lot easier to navigate. Now, originally, you would be dealing with your Trezor entirely online via their web portal, but Trezor has now dropped a desktop application called Trezor Suite that we're going to be using with the device today. So we'll be diving into that in just a moment. But before we get started, of course, I have to give a shout out to sponsors of the show. Ledin.io, this is where you can use your Bitcoin for a variety of different services. Uh, they They've, of course, got their Bitcoin back loans. This is where you can use your Bitcoin as collateral to get a Canadian or US dollar loan. So if you're in a pinch and you need to get your hands on dollars, but you don't want to sell your Bitcoin because one, that is a taxable event. And two, maybe you're worried about having to buy back in at a higher price. Well, this could be an option for you. They've also got Bitcoin and USDC savings accounts with interest rates of up to 11.7% annually paid monthly. And they've got their B2X offering which uses the same loan mechanism to instantly buy more bitcoin effectively doubling your bitcoin on the spot so if you want to check these guys out there is a link in the show notes down below and if you click that link and opt to get one of their loan products they will give you 25 bucks worth of usdc directly into your savings account for free now up next we have the legends at crypto cloaks these guys are incredible bitcoiners they've got a growing fleet of 3d printers and they're just pumping out the swag like nobody's business i of course have a shell for my node from them i've got the bitcoin grenade on the way which is great for gifting things. Uh, I've got the Triton on the way. I have my Bitcoin coasters. I'm eyeing the Citadel flag. They've got sticker packs. They've got a little bit of everything for everyone. So head over to CryptoCloaks.com if you want to check out the best in Bitcoin swag and memorabilia and drop the code BTC Sessions, all one word, for 5% off at checkout. Now, of course, this is a video about a Bitcoin hardware wallet, but I would be remiss if I didn't mention uh, our are a sponsor of the show, Kobo Vault. And what's different about Kobo Vault compared to Trezor? Well, Kobo Vault utilizes something called air gapping, meaning you never actually plug the thing into a computer. Everything is done offline via QR code. So that adds an additional layer of security. They've, uh, for the pro version, you've got the fingerprint scanner and rechargeable battery. Um, they do have Bitcoin only firmware, which I highly recommend using. And it works interoperable with a lot of my favorite wallets, in particular Wasabi Wallet. Wallet on desktop and Blue Wallet on mobile. I love using my Kobo with the two of those. So be sure to check them out. There's a link in the show notes down below. And again, for reference, I'm using the Pro version, which does have the fingerprint scanner and rechargeable battery. And finally, uh, if you're living on Bitcoin or maybe you're just sitting on Bitcoin that you have for a while and you think it's time to treat yourself, it would be a disservice to yourself to not check out BitRefill. I use this because I am living on Bitcoin. My income is Bitcoin. And so often I need to do things like get groceries and gas and do some shopping. And this allows me to do it. It works in a multitude of different countries. It has just a plethora of different gift cards. It would be difficult not to find what you need on BitRefill. So do check them out. And on top of that, one of the bonuses is 
as you're shopping, you're actually earning not cash back, but sats back. You're actually getting Bitcoin back as you shop. So if you're, uh, again, living on Bitcoin, or if you're treating yourself, or you're a buy and spend and replace kind of guy or girl, then Again, you got to check out BitRefill. There's a link to them down in the show notes. And with that, let's dive into our tutorial today. So here we are with Trezor Suite pulled up on my desktop, as well as my Trezor plugged in down below. Uh, do note that there is the tamper evident tape down at the bottom whenever you receive this. If you do not have this tape on yours, I would maybe not utilize it because uh, it's meant to warn you if anybody has gotten into your device in between the shipping process. So just be, be aware that that should be on there and you should have to peel it off to be able to plug anything in. Anyways, let's get started here in Tre Trezor Suite rather. Uh, so what you're going to be choosing between is setup device or use device. Um, this is if you've downloaded this program brand new onto your computer. At the time of recording this video, by the way, it is still in beta, but that will likely change in the near term. So there may be a few new features as you're exploring this for the first time, and it will likely be out of beta in the coming months. So as more people come to Bitcoin and uh, and start looking for videos like this, um, this is just kind of future proofing for uh, as people come on. But anyways, we're going to be going with begin setup instead of access suite because we've never used this device before before and we need to set it up. So we're going to hit begin setup and we're going to hit create new wallet. Now recover wallet is for when you've already initialized this device and you've written down a backup phrase on this piece of paper here, which is your backup sheet, which is provided by Trezor. Okay, so if you needed to recover, you would just utilize the words we're about to write down and hit the recover wallet button, but we are creating new. Now, it says, uh, I've never used this Trezor before, or I have used this Trezor. Again, we haven't used it yet, so we're gonna hit check Trezor, okay. Now, it says my Trezor has been used. I have used this Trezor before, uh, but just so you know, um, uh, it was kind of like an initial practice setup before creating this video, but it's good to know that you will get this warning if the Trezor has been used before. I'm gonna hit continue anyways. Verify your seal. It's telling you about the special tape at the bottom. Seal was okay. Your Trezor's almost ready. Continue. Okay, firmware ready. And so this is where normally, had you not used this Trezor before, it would install the software for the Trezor to use, okay? Um, in this case, it already has uh, firmware already on it, uh, but I'll hit continue anyways. Um, now we're gonna select the type of backup for our wallet. There is standard or there is advanced. For the purposes of this video, I will just be using the standard seed, which will be 12 English words. Okay, now the Trezor has some instructions for me here. And it says, do you want to create a new wallet? I'm gonna hit the check mark. Okay, it says that I need backup. And so I defer to the screen on my computer, it says create backup, or I can skip backup and pin. I obviously don't wanna skip that process, so I'm gonna hit create backup. Okay, I do have enough time. I'm in a safe private space, despite the fact this is going on the internet. Um, and you are responsible for keeping your backup safe. So just keep in mind, we're about to write down a backup for this device. These 12 words that you're going to write down are the equivalent of creating a copy of your house key, except for this key is to your money. And so if anybody obtains the copy of that key, they have full access to what it unlocks, which again is your money. So treat these words, this backup as cash. If anybody can get a hold of it, it could be gone. So keep it in a safe space, write it down on paper. Do not make a digital copy of this. Very important. These words are your money. I'll say it one more time. These words are your money. Keep them safe. Begin backup. Okay. Now on the device, it's going to tell us what to do. It says never make a digital copy. As I just said, it's warning you everything I just said. I understand. Okay. So write down these words. Of course, 
I will be wiping this device after this show, so I'm comfortable showing this here. But again, I have to reiterate, don't show these words to everybody. All you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be writing down these words, and when you want to go to the next, you swipe and you'll see the next ones. You go all the way down to the bottom until you get to 12. Now I need to start from the beginning. We will be right back as soon as I've written these down on my handy personal seed recovery sheet. Now, upon writing down all of my words, it gets to the bottom. It says, I wrote down all 12 words in order, hold to confirm. So I hold that button, circle around, and now it's going to double check by giving me a short quiz uh, that I've actually written this down. So I have to look at word number four on my sheet and select which one it actually is. I can see it is derive. Now, what is word number six? It is dentist. And what is word number 10? It is ice. Okay, you have finished verifying your recovery seed. Continue. Your backup is done. Use your backup when you need to recover your wallet. So if you lose or destroy this device, the backup of the words you've just written down will enable you to recover your funds because, again, it's a copy of the keys to your money. If that does happen to you, it is a good idea to use those words to recover your money and move it to a different wallet just in case your device fell into somebody else's hands and they're trying to... Uh, uh, trying to basically pull your backup off of it. Maybe they, there's more or less consider your device compromised in any case with any device. If it goes missing, always a good practice. Okay. Continue. All right. Now I'm going to defer to my computer here. Okay. So, uh, review. I did review my seed. Never take a photo. Keep your seed private. Again, it's just giving you those good practices here. Continue setup. So now we're going to create a pin. All right. So I'll click create pin. Now follow just instructions. Do you really want to enable a pin? Yes, I do. Okay. So it scrambles the number here, the numbers on your screen every single time you use it so that if somebody's watching from afar, they can't really decipher what pin you're putting in. So it's kind of just a clever uh, security mechanism to save you from prying eyes. Uh, regardless, this pin is only good for the device. It does not pertain to your backup seed. It's just if somebody gets a hold of your device and tries to put in the wrong pin multiple times, the device will be wiped and then it will require your backup in order to uh, access your money. Okay, so I'm just going to choose a very simple one. Don't choose this pin. I'm just doing one, two, three, four. And then one, two, three, four. Okay, just for the purposes of this video to keep it simple. All right, you've successfully enabled pin protection. Continue. All right, so our treasure is now set up and on the screen it says complete setup, access suite. We're set. So right away we land here on our dashboard on Trezor Suite. We can see that obviously in our portfolio we have zero dollars worth of anything because we have not utilized the wallet yet. Um, you can right away click receive to get going if you like, but let's just investigate a little bit further. If we scroll down, we can see any assets that we have enabled. I myself only utilize Bitcoin. If you watch the channel long enough, it'll become relatively clear as to why. But if you choose to add more coins, you can click here and it'll give you a list of things that I don't really have interest in, but that is your prerogative. Back to the dashboard here. Uh, down the list here, we have multiple security items that have been checked because we've created our backup. We enabled a pin. Uh, you can add a passphrase. Again, we'll look at this later on about creating a passphrase because I have been playing with this a little bit before the video. Uh, and then discrete mode is just up here, this little eyeball. This will, uh, if I scroll up, it will hide your balance unless you hover over it. So just an extra little thing for you to try there. Uh, and then down at the bottom, you've got your news. Now, outside of the dashboard, if you go to accounts, this has any accounts that may be currently existing um, utilizing your device. Okay. So with myself, I just have a single Bitcoin account, but if I want to add an account, I can hit the plus button here 
Effectively, you're going to be asked, what currency are you using? Again, with me, obviously, I'm going to be choosing Bitcoin. And then you've got one other option here, and it's the account type. Now, to newcomers, this may be confusing, but very simple. All you need to know is this top option here, native SegWit. It will be the lowest fees when you go to send out from the wallet and a little bit of a convoluted answer as to why but more or less it's the most efficient way to utilize bitcoin uh, so i would by default go with native segwit just just know it means your bitcoin addresses will start with bc1 uh, and then you can hit add account there uh, when you're ready to do so but i've already got an account up and running and here you have an overview of any transactions. You've got your receive and send screen, and then you've got a trade screen where you can actually buy Bitcoin or you can soon exchange and spend. So this may uh, look a little bit different by the time you use it. Okay, so with that, let's just do the natural thing first, and we're gonna receive some Bitcoin. So we hit receive. It shows, it automatically bumps you to where we just were, accounts uh, with Bitcoin, and it hits receive. And so what we have here is a fresh address. Every time you receive Bitcoin, you will generate a new address. Okay, this helps with privacy a little bit. When I hit show full address, what ends up happening is I see a QR code, and I see this string of digits, uh, letters, and numbers. This is my address. What I could do is I could, I could copy it and send it elsewhere, or I could scan this QR code with a Bitcoin wallet and that would uh, allow me to send direct to myself as well. Uh, on the device, when you hit show full address, you're also presented with the same address that is hopefully the same address that is on your computer. And the reason for this is the Trezor itself is meant to be kind of your beacon of truth. And it's assuming that maybe, who knows, your your computer could be compromised. And so it's important that you take a look at the address on your computer and the address on the device and confirm that they are one and the same. And if you're also paranoid beyond that, and this isn't a bad idea to do, if you hit QR on the device, then you could scan the QR code from your device rather than from your computer if you don't trust the QR code that is here. So uh, multiple measures to ensure you're doing the right thing. So what I'm going to do now is I have a Bitcoin wallet on my phone. Uh, this is called Blue Wallet and I've done a full tutorial on Blue Wallet. If you want to check that out, it will be in the show notes down below, but it is a mobile wallet that I already have some Bitcoin in. Now this could vary. You might be coming from an exchange where you have some Bitcoin and you need to send it, but the process is more or less the same. You need to either, depending on whether you're using a wallet, it will likely say send, like with Blue Wallet down at the bottom here, it says send. On most exchanges, it'll say something like withdrawal. But regardless, I'm gonna hit send. And here in Blue Wallet, there's an option where it says scan. You may need to copy and paste your address here and uh, paste it into an exchange if you're dealing with an exchange. But regardless, I'm gonna hit the scan button. This opens up my camera, which I'm now gonna scan the uh, QR code. Uh, let's scan the one, I'll just, I'll just bring it up on my device again. And I'll scan this one instead. Okay, so now <laughs> it's a little hard to see, but uh, the address is there and I'm kind of looking back and forth and verifying, and it looks to be good to me. So now I'm gonna choose the amount of Bitcoin that I would like to send. Okay, so I've got $100 worth of Bitcoin on the screen that's being sent. Okay, that looks good to me. I'm just gonna hit next, and I'm gonna hit send now. Okay, I can see it's confirmed, it's done, and so, now let's head over to Trezor and see what has happened. Okay, uh, and I'll hit check mark here. Okay. So we are back in Trezor suite and look, we can see that we have a balance. Obviously the Canadian dollar is not what it used to be. So we've got about 76 US dollars here. I can change that by the way. Let's just do that while we're at it. Uh, general 
fiat currency, Canadian dollars. Okay, let's go back. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, so 99, 92. The reason for the discrepancy in the 100 versus the 8 cents off, it depends where they're pulling their pricing information from. There's a lot of different markets selling Bitcoin and there may be slight variations there. So just so you know. Now, down below, we have our overview. So I can see that there is an incoming transaction here for Bitcoin for this amount. And uh, and this will change over time as more transactions happen over various time frames. You can bring that down to a single week, to a month, to a year. So it will kind of give you a, a better idea. All right, so here we are. Our transaction is now confirmed. And so we're, let's practice sending out to another wallet. We're going to actually send back to Blue Wallet. Now, uh, all we need to do is we are already in our accounts here. We have the account, the only account we have selected. And you can see by checking Bitcoin number one listed over on the left. And that's the one that's on our screen. We just click on the send tab. And the first thing we need is an address to send to. So uh, on my Blue Wallet here, uh, down at the bottom, there's a receive button. So by tapping that, what I get is a QR code and I get an address down below it, a, num a string of digits like before. Now, if I tap that, I can copy it and I can send a message to myself or, or somebody could email me their address or whatever. And you could copy and paste it into the address field right here. Or alternatively, there is the scan button. And what this allows me to do is open up my webcam and scan that QR code. Let's do it. Okay, and so at this point, I just want to verify the address on the screen of my wall of my wallet on my phone. With this one, everything looks good to me. So next, we need to choose the amount. Okay, uh, I would like to send the maximum. Okay, otherwise, I could put in a specific amount either in uh, either in Bitcoin or in Canadian dollars. But send max. That's what we're doing. Okay. Now at this point, everything looks good to me. Now, if I wanted to clear out everything, I could hit clear all. There is uh, some other kind of more advanced options that I'm not gonna touch on right now. Uh, and that all looks good to me. Now, the fee here, you can set where it says fee, you can hit low, economy, normal, high, or custom, okay? Custom, if you get into understanding uh, fee structures and, and how busy the network is, you can go to that and set Satoshis per byte. But otherwise, you can just toggle between these options. Um, I'm not in a huge rush, so I'm going to go economy. That's only going to cost me about $0.09. Cents. Um, you can see quite a bit different between the, the two. That's $1.99 Canadian and high would be about two forty three. dollars And that, expect that to fluctuate quite a bit as more people come to Bitcoin, okay? So just be aware this could differ. And so smaller transactions may not be feasible later on unless you're using something like Lightning Network, which I cover on the channel as well. So be sure to check that out. Anyways, this looks good to me. I'm going to go economy. I can wait. Not a big deal. I'm going to hit review and send. And this is where it differs from a regular Bitcoin wallet because there's an extra step here. Okay. On my device here on the Trezor, it says confirm you're sending this much Bitcoin to this address. Uh, that looks good to me. I have my other wallet in front of me and I can see it. And so I'm going to go ahead and hit the check mark. And then it says confirm transaction. It says total amount and including the fee. And if I confirm that, I just hold the button. I'm going to go ahead. Boom. That is done. And I'm going to hit send. Bam. That has now been sent out. And if I open up my blue wallet, I'll just hit refresh here. And I should be able to see an incoming transaction in just a moment. There, here in Blue Wallet, I can see a pending transaction for just shy of well about ninety nine dollars ninety nine ninety one. Okay, so minus that few cent fee, looking pretty good. Okay, perfect. Uh, so that is sending and receiving. At this point, what I'd like to do is take a look 
a little bit into the settings here of the Trezor and what you can actually do with it. Now, up top in the right, of course, we have the, you know, we had our, our uh, hidden mode. We have any notifications from the drop down here. This gives details of transactions, anything that you've done, any changes here. Uh, you have your settings. And if we click on settings, we get a whole bunch of different stuff. As we saw before, we can change our currency here in settings. Uh, you can go ahead and label, which allows you to rename your wallets, accounts, and addresses. And these are applied by syncing with Dropbox or Google Drive. Now, you do not have to do this. You can still relabel, but just know it won't. Uh, it, it won't carry over if you delete and then re-download the software. The labels will be missing. Now, Tor, you can toggle on with a switch here. This adds encryption to what you're doing. Never a bad idea to add a little bit of encryption and help keep everything private. Furthermore, if you toggle this switch, every time you open a link uh, for Trezor, it will open as an onion link, which again is encrypted via the Tor browser. Now, what else do we have here? Usage data, do you want to share this? Typically, I have this clicked off because I don't want to share any extra data. Uh, app storage, you can reset any data that is in this native app on your computer and wipe it. And then lastly, you see the version that you're on and you can check for updates of this software that you're using. Back to the top, for the device specifically, you can see that we already did a backup here. You can check your backup, so you can check your seed words via your device uh, just by inputting them on the device itself. Uh, you can again check your firmware version here. Your pin number is here. You can toggle that on and off. You can also change the pin and then a passphrase. Okay, so passphrase is where you can actually add a uh, add a, an account that is hidden from regular use. So if somebody were to get a hold of your device, was able to bypass the pin, this passphrase and it would be a passphrase of your choice would create a brand new account that nobody would even know is there there's no indication that a passphrase is even used on the device when somebody gets a hold of it so you can go ahead and do that we're going to do that in a minute but let's keep looking through the settings a little bit more you can change the device name right now it's just set to my treasure my treasure but you can change that here the home screen you can change the image on it right now it's just the basic uh, little Trezor logo here, um, but you can swap that out for whatever you like, and you can also rotate the display if you like. Uh, and then finally, you can wipe your entire device here, okay? Uh, I wouldn't recommend that on the regular, but it is an option, and if you do so, then the words that you wrote down at the beginning will be able to restore it back to the original. And finally, over here on coins, uh, this I don't really go into, <laughs> because I don't use any of these other coins, but if you must, that is here, and you can toggle them on by hitting the buttons. But mm, I'm going to turn that back off. So now that we have utilized a regular account, let's go ahead and take a look at what it's like creating a hidden account with a passphrase. Now, it is very important to note that when you add a passphrase to your treasure, it effectively acts as a 13th word for your backup phrase and creates an entirely new accounting system that does not exist as far as stored on the device itself. The device itself is linked to, yes, the 12 words that you have, and that is a backup, but without that passphrase, the account will be inaccessible. So what I'm getting at is do not forget your extra passphrase if you choose to use one but it's never a bad idea to utilize one just in case somebody gets access to your device or your written backup, they won't even know that the money is actually there and hidden behind a passphrase. So how do we utilize this? I wanna show you something. As soon as I unplug my Trezor, watch what happens. Okay, so you are booted out of Trezor Suite. So you need to reconnect to access it once again. So I'm gonna do that. Tap to connect. I'm going to put in the pin number that we put in before. Okay. 
Okay, so now a little bit different here. Uh, so it says, do you want a standard wallet or do you want a hidden wallet with a passphrase? And I would like to utilize a passphrase and whatever passphrase you put in here will be an entirely different account. So you could put in whatever you like. You could put in, I don't know, giraffe or hippo or, you know, any type of probably not the best passphrases. I'm, I'm just coming up with random things, but you could put in whatever you like here and that would all become its own account. Uh, so it's interchangeable. There is technically no wrong answer here unless you're trying to access funds that you've already put associated with a passphrase. Now, what I like to do here is enter passphrase on the Trezor because again, it's good to assume that maybe, just maybe, your computer is compromised. It's always better to defer to the device. So rather than enter a passphrase here, I'm gonna go ahead and enter passphrase on the Trezor. And so what you get is an alphabet and you can put in your passphrase if you're trying to put in a letter that's further down you just tap the button multiple times so we're just going to use a very ba basic passphrase uh, and we're going to use the word test once i have it i'm going to hit check mark okay and now here it's going to check if there are any associated balances with this hidden wallet now it says confirm empty hidden wallet it says the hidden wallet is empty to make sure you are in the correct hidden wallet please type again the passphrase on the trezor okay and so here it opens up my hidden wallet and you can see it says hidden wallet number one um, and right now no transactions no previous transactions if i go to the dashboard again nothing so it's not associated with the previous wallet that we used because we would be seeing the previous transactions that went in and out so what people can do is have a regular trezor account with no passphrase on it and put a small amount of bitcoin in it and that would become a decoy account so uh, in Bitcoin, they often talk about the $5 wrench attack, which basically means if you've got great security practices, but somebody comes at you with a $5 wrench and threatens to hit you with it until you reveal your money, then you may want an additional measure in place. And that can be a hidden wallet. So in that instance, if somebody's threatening you saying, plug in your device, give me your money, you can have a smaller account with less money in it and then your real account with your actual savings in it behind a passphrase that the person will not even know exists. So uh, definitely a good security practice, but it comes with responsibility because again, you don't want to forget that passphrase. Otherwise, nobody can help you, not even the team at Trezor. And with that, I think that gives a pretty good overview of how to utilize Trezor with Trezor Suite on desktop. Uh, but if you do have any questions, please do leave them down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're here on YouTube, please do remember to hit like, subscribe, and share. All of those things really, really do help. Uh, and it bumps videos like this in front of way more eyeballs so that people can get the help they need with their Bitcoin security. Now, if you want to help out the show in another way, you can hit up the sponsors I mentioned previously down below. That was Aladdin. Kobo, uh, Crypto Cloaks, and Bit Refill. All of those links are in the show notes. And if you really loved what you saw, you can always drop me a Lightning Network tip at my tippin.me page. That is T I P P I N dot me slash at BTC sessions. That's where you can use a Bitcoin Lightning wallet to drop tips. And if you don't know about that, plenty much more tutorials on Lightning Network on this channel here. So don't miss them. Uh, with that, I am out. Have yourselves a wonderful day, a wonderful evening, wherever you may be. And I'll see you next time for your daily session. Bitcoin.